In my last video, I explained how to install Python and use its interpreter, the REPL. I hope it was easy to follow and that you're ready to move on. If not, you can go back to my other video to make sure you've got it all set up, because you can't really follow the rest of this series without getting started. It's the foundation that counts. And I also hope you've completed the homework, which was to read the Zen of Python. If you haven't done it, shame on you. Nah, I'm joking. But it is really worth looking at, because it makes all the difference when writing code. Anyways, let's move on and look at what the standard library is. When you go to the library, you can take out books and bring them home so you can read about them and get info. In Python, the standard library works in much the same way. We have a gigantic standard library. Like how real libraries have books, the Python standard library has what's called modules. I'll talk more about them in later videos, but they're basically little programs that someone else wrote that let us do something without having to write lines of code. And the best part is, you don't need to go drive to some building to go get the modules. They're built right into Python. All you need to do is tell Python that you want to have them in your program. Let's jump onto the REPL so I can show you. So, do you remember how to open the REPL? On Windows, type in Python, and in Mac OS and Linux, run Python 3. Now we're in the REPL, let's bring in a book, I mean, module. I'll carry on with the maths theme in the last video. We'll import the math module by typing in import math. The maths module has a bunch of math stuff in it that can do much more than your simple 2 plus 2. Now, inside all modules are functions. Think of them as chapters in a book. They contain the actual lines of code, and all you need to do is type in the name of the function. There are a bunch of functions in the math module which each do different things. But how do we know what functions are in a module? You can always ask Python for help. Type in help, open bracket, math, close bracket. Look at that. Okay, so you can use the spacebar to page through the manual. And if we scroll down here, we can find the square root function. Now we're talking. That's much more than 2 plus 2. But how exactly do we run it? Well, first, press Q to quit out of the manual. So running it is actually quite simple. First, type in the name of the module, in our case math, then a dot, then the name of the function that we want, in our case square root. Inside these brackets will be the number that we want to square root. Let's put in 4. We get 2. Impressive, right? But let's step it up a notch. We'll get some more help. Ah, look at this. Ever heard of factorials? Well, if you haven't, it works like this. If you wanted the factorial of 5, you would do 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 to get to 120. The factorial of 6 would be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6. Make sense? Let's do a calculation. Press Q to quit again. And now, first we'll assign some variables. And now, we'll type in the calculation. It might look weird, but all it does is figure out how many ways there are to choose 5 things from 8 things. And you'll notice that we didn't call square root directly. Instead, we typed in the name of the module, followed by a dot, followed by the name of the function. This way of getting to the function is called dot notation. It's like how in English, Abel's book means that the book belongs to Abel. Similarly, the function factorial belongs to the math module. This is a lot to type, I think you'll agree. How can we shorten our code here? Well, you can actually import specific functions from a module. Look at it this way. Instead of going through the whole book, you can just pick out a specific chapter to get the info you need. Here, I'll show you. Type in from math import factorial. Because of that, you don't need this math thing at the start because you imported just the function. So now we can type in this. Much shorter, but we can go further. Look at this nifty trick. From math import 
factorial as FAC. So what this does is just rename the function. So now we don't even have to type in the whole word, we only need to type in three letters. This is a lot better than that. While this is cool and all, this method of renaming things shouldn't be used all too much. You won't see it in other people's code that much. Quiz time! The answers will be revealed in the next video. Here are the questions. Question 1. How do you import modules in Python? Question 2. How do you import functions from a module? And question 3. What is the name of the word that describes how you access functions from an imported module? Remember, the answers will be revealed in the next video, so tune in for that, and tell me your answers in the comment section below in the meantime. There's so much more to the Python standard library than just math. It's massive, as I've said probably all too much. But I won't be able to fit all of it in this video, as I'm sure you're aware, so the rest is up for you to discover. So for your homework, I want you to import a module that can pick a number between 1 and 6. A function that can roll a die if you like. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, dislike, you know the drill, I don't need to tell you I'm sure. And tell me down in the comments section whether you're following along, or go ahead and give me some constructive criticism. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see ya!